Jofflin. Hi. Hi, what's up? How are you doing How are today? You? I'm doing super good. I'm still taking it easy. Yeah. This is my first day here. So you're in town for ADE. Yes. Uh, you're playing with Tin Liquor, mm -hmm. right? Are you looking forward to that show? Yes, I'm super excited. Yeah. Lots of my friends are playing and him are playing. Who mm -hmm. I'm super good friends with. Joyce Muniz is playing yeah. too. Um, I am playing at five in the morning, which is the latest I've ever played. Wow. Uh, which is due to some like fight things. Okay. Um, because normally, because I play live sets, I don't DJ and I sing and I like, you know, play the keys and like synths and vocoders. That's, that type of music fits obviously more into like the earlier, like, you know, time of the yeah. night. Yeah. Um, Working your way into the Exactly. Yeah. Easing your way in. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is definitely not going to be, th be the case at ADE this year. Uh, but I mean, I think it can be a highlight at 5 a.m. too. Yeah. How's this past year been for you? It's been mad, right? This year has been crazy. Yeah. I would have never imagined that this is the amount of gigs I would be playing. I made an album, lots of new tracks too. This whole year I had a little residency in Ibiza. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> How was that? <laughs> yeah, that was, I mean, that's like a second home almost mm -hmm. now. And it's been so much fun and so many new experiences, but I also can't wait to now go back into tapping more into that creativity again. Yeah. And really letting all of those impressions that I was, you know, fortunate enough to make during the summer out and cr turning them into music. You've got a real plan and it's like you're kind of going for that. The, I'm very German when it comes to planning. Everything planned out for the next few months. Right. That's the, that's the way I do it. Does that inform your artistry as well? That level of like planning and or Not you really. spontaneous? That's actually like where I tried to really be the exact opposite. I wanted to be as chaotic as possible because I feel like that's when the most fun things happen. Like mm -hmm. when you're in the flow, you don't really know what's happening left or right. You're just yeah. doing and it's like coming out you don't know where it's coming from mm -hmm. those are like the moments I live for so I think by like planning the rest of my life I kind of have this framework to allow for this outburst of you know chaos and unplannedness to, to happen it's like a scientific experiment you're like controlling all I your feel variables like a mad scientist yes <laughs> I read I don't know if it's true but you started out as a poet at the age of six right <laughs> I mean, poet is very over-exaggerated, I obviously yeah. wasn't like a <laughs> you prodigy were not poet at six. <laughs> I was just like writing poetry because I think we had, we were learning how to write poetry in, like, in school. I was just always into that and then I was writing my own poems. Then I was actually like just, because I was playing the piano starting at the age of five too, you know. Typical Asian, Asian upbringing. Uh, just so. living up to the Mozart uh, exactly, storyline exactly. here. Though. My grandpa's like at six, like, why yeah. aren't you like, a virtuoso yet? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was, so I was playing the piano uh, and I was writing those poems and that some, one day I was just kind of inspired by all the other artists that you know I was seeing on the radio and I was like, why don't I combine the two worlds? And then I just sang my poems over those chords and at the beginning, of course, it was like very abstract poems basically with melody. And then I got into like the whole song structure thing, like, you know, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, and I uh, got more into, you know, harmony, like theory and everything. At some point I was really writing like classical, like piano ballads at the piano. I think the electronic like influence kind of came just through growing up in Berlin. Then one day I discovered first garage band on my computer soon after Ableton. I started, you know, having fun producing and yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing ever since then. I'm still, I always say like, I'm still just experimenting, like yeah. having fun with it. The way you do your sets, it's almost like, it, to me, it sounds reflective of, the, of how you came to be a musician. You kind of build those tracks up, you know, piece by piece and kind of give the audience, take them on that journey with exactly. you. Yeah, I want to take them. My goal is always to kind of take them behind the creative process in the studio. So I'll have like different elements of a song on like the trigger pad and then I'll trigger this and then I'll like introduce each element kind of separately to then form the whole thing. People are like the most interested to kind of be a part of this usually very mysterious creative process that's kind of kept behind closed doors. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm trying to do live. You seem to really like want to democratize your knowledge almost in that way. I saw this amazing workshop you did. I think it was Beatport mm -hmm. with Microsoft, right? Yeah. Is that going to continue to be part of your career, that education? I mean, my definitely. I love doing like panels, workshops too, like next to the live shows taking the whole like fear out of this very technical thing, which is music production, making it more like accessible, um, especially to women, which is like a big passion of mine to kind of 
get more women into music production because it is such a male dominated field. I think only 2% of all producers are women, which is crazy. Oh my God. Um, so yeah, I'm actually working really closely together with Ableton and also Spotify now to kind of work on creating, creating safe spaces, you know, work on representation, just work on making it less intimidating. So yeah, that's like why I try to be an open book if I can inspire just one person to start living out their creativity uh, and through, through that way I'm, my job's done. You mentioned something interesting before about safe spaces and how important that is to you know, ensure you've got more people from more backgrounds entering this world. What does a safe space look like to you? No judgment. Um, I think that's most important. Inclusion, obviously, that everyone can be a part of a safe space. Uh, no negativity. I think there is a difference between constructive criticism and negativity, like a big difference. I think people often, especially nowadays with internet culture, like everything's always so extreme. I feel like people need to tap into that more sensitive way to give criticism again, uh, and also to receive criticism. I know even I, like, it's hard to deal with criticism, uh, and but I think if you're open to it and if you, you're just self-reflective enough, then that's a really important skill to have. What role do you feel technology has in continuing to open up this world to, to those who might not have already been part of it? I mean, first of all, through the internet, like everything's democratized. Like you said, like you don't have these typical gatekeeper roles anymore, like typical lab labels or MTV back in the day, uh, where they would basically choose what the rest of the world would be able to listen to. Just, it was a question of accessibility. I mean, nowadays you can put your stuff up on SoundCloud and blow up like Billie Eilish or yeah. so many other artists. That's a really big pro yeah. that, you know, this whole internet thing came with. I don't have any physical, like, equipment, like any physical synths uh, in my studio. I do it all through plugins. Yeah, that's just been a way for me to afford, like to be able to mess around with all of these sounds that normally, like it would have taken me a couple of years to save up to even be able to achieve that sound. And I think that's also really beautiful. I mean, of course, there's always this discussion, does the digital version of something emulate what the original analog sounds like? You know, at the end of the day, what's most important is the creative like substance yeah. and um, the kind of the vehicle through which you get that expressed, I think, is, um, is maybe not what people should focus that much on. What's a collaboration that you would love to make happen? There's five women that have like most inspired me to become the person that I am today, not only just musically. Um, there are Sade, Kate Bush, Björk, uh, Aliyah and um, Robin. Aliyah, obviously not, but any of the other four would be completely mind-blowing for me, especially probably Sade, because she's yeah. been the one that I really grew up with. So yeah, that would be like a, definitely like a goosebump, I, oh my god, what's happening yeah. moment for me. All at the same time, if possible. All at the, we should form a girl band <laughs> together. <laughs> yes. Imagine. Please, <laughs> Yes, please. <laughs> We're stopping the conversation there. Wow, okay. I have a new life goal now. <laughs> Thank you. It's been amazing to chat to you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. It's been so nice to talk to you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Let us know who you would like to see us interview next in the comments below. Bye.